From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Sunday Sports Extra. Well, welcome on into Sunday Sports Extra. If you're like the both of us, uh, we appreciate you staying up this late because if you watch the Boise State game and are still watching this, it means you haven't got a whole lot of sleep lately. No, absolutely not. Last night's game ending at what, 12 15? Uh, I remember exactly, 12 11 a.m. Uh. That's when the game ended. So today. So today. Today. Yes. It's been a long day. Uh, it doesn't detract <laughs> from what was an awesome night, though, at Albertson yeah. Stadium. We'll get to the fans in a moment. But first things first, as we go to the highlights, Boise State naming their famous ha hammer after the late, great Dan Paul. Just a really cool tribute here by uh, Matt Fasoni, who also wore the number 47, the same number that Dan Paul wore. Yeah, Paul, of course, passed away this July. Dan's family was on hand as honorary captains last night. Certainly a special moment for the entire Paul family on hand. See Dan's father as well as his wife right there. Pretty special moment before kickoff. Yeah, very cool. To the highlights we go, though, the Broncos strike on their opening drive of the game. How about this? Khalil Shakir on the direct snap rushes it in from five yards out. That put the Broncos on the board, seven zip. Ensuing possession for Hawaii, Keikala Kaniho forces the first of four turno turnovers the Broncos defense produced last night. Going the other way now, Boise State capitalizing off the turnover. Hank with a dime to John Hightower from 26 yards out. Yeah, you know the name. Broncos go up 14 zip. Hawaii would answer. They drive down the field three plays later. Cole McDonald to Lincoln Victor, 14-7. Boise State still ahead. The Broncos would continue to put points on the board. A drive would stall out here, but Eric Sachs was able to kick this 38 yarder right through the uprights. That put the Broncos back out in front by double digits. Then this. Hank Bachmeyer's final play of the game Wait, last what? night. Wait, what? Isn't this the second quarter? Yes, second quarter. Takes a huge hit. He would walk off under his own mm. strength to turn to the sidelines in sweats after this. Yeah, I was kind of just kidding there, folks, but obviously a very serious moment regarding Boise State's quarterback who walked off the field very gingerly. Now, Boise State's defense would get the ball back. Curtis Weaver, the nation's leader in sacks, provides the pressure, forces the fumble, and the Broncos recover. That's Keikoa Nawahine with the recovery. Three plays later, Chase Cord going up top to Khalil Shakir. 33 yards out. That was a beauty. Shaq's second TD of the night. Boise State out in front, 24 to 7. So on Hawaii's very next offensive play, how about yet another turnover? Benton Wickersham filling in just fine for Ezekiel Noah. Teams up with Avery Williams to force the fumble. And yes, the Broncos take over in stellar field position. Notice a theme, turnover, capitalize. Six plays later, Robert Mahone on a misdirection out of the unique formation, 13 yards to the house. Boise State ahead, 31-7. Keep a track at home, we're still in the first half. <laughs> right before they went into the locker rooms, Cole McDonald to uh, Marquise Stovall, the Broncos still uh, led by 17 at halftime. On to the second we go. Chase Cord finished 12 of 18 for 175 yards and three touchdowns, including that one right there. Another beauty, this one to John Hightower. That made it 38 to 14. You know, Will and I had to skip dinner last night, so we were <laughs> awfully hungry, but nobody was more hungry than freshman George Halani fighting his way into the end zone, extends the ball over the pylon. The 25-yard TD toss from Jalen Henderson made it 45-14. The Broncos were rolling at this point. Final play of the third quarter. Cord's third and final TD pass of the night. Let's get some more George Halani. What an effort to get into the end zone. Boise State with a 50-burger, 52-21 heading to the four. Well, I hope you're not tired of George because we got one more for you. How about this? On his way to the end zone, kind of gets a little confused. Go inside, Boom. outside. Instead, he just goes right through <laughs> the defender and into the end zone. The 40-yard TD just put this one to bed. Boise State improves to 6-0 on the year. They're now bowl eligible for the 22nd straight year. 59-37 the final afterwards. Coach Harson gave us an update on Hank Bachmeyer. He got hit in the side. And then he was out and just he was not going to come back in. And we didn't at that point, honestly, with Chase, he's ready to play. 
And so it's one of those decisions like let's go, let's just roll with Chase and you know give Hank a chance too to you know, rest up a little bit. You know, it's not going to be season ending, anything like that. Um, you know, if it's a hit pointer or whatever, something along those lines. But he was back out there and he was right in front of me. We're kind of going through the fans and high five and he was right in front of me kind of moseying along there. And um, Hank's a tough player. You know, he took a shot tonight and we turned the ball over on that play and he was obviously upset about that. He wanted to hang on to the football and that's been a point of emphasis. But we didn't need to have him back in the game with Chase and Jalen. We had a plan for that. Seeing Chase play too, he comes out there and throws a great touchdown pass to Shakir. Uh, excellent read, making great decisions and he's just got really good command out there. So felt good about him. And I didn't really push anything that we needed to do from, from Hank's standpoint. Yeah. You know, one thing I'll say about Coach Harson is that usually he doesn't provide a lot of injuries about details unless it's a season-ending update. He did give us a couple of details last night, which is appreciated because Bronco Nation was very concerned yeah. about their uh, standout true freshman quarterback, Hank Bachmeyer. Absolutely. Two things stick out. First thing, Hank walked off under his own power, and then, of course, you saw him walk into the mm -hmm. sidelines. That's obviously a good sign mm -hmm. moving forward. The other thing, Boise State's quarterback depth mm -hmm. was on display last night. Wow, Chase Core, Jalen Henderson. I honestly, don't, I honestly don't know if there is a team, uh, definitely in the Mountain West, but maybe even around the country that is as deep at that specific position as Boise State because they have three guys that are legitimate dudes right now. And for more on their <laughs> performance last night, we toss it over to Tom Scott for tonight's edition of the Scott Slam. And thanks a lot, Jay. Boise State has a capable quarterback combo, and not many teams, as you guys mentioned, can say that. Here's what we saw last night in black and white, or uh, blue and orange and white. In order of appearance, Hank Bachmeyer was just three of nine before his injury, but he did cover 58 yards and had that beautiful TD strike to John Hightower. Chase Cord threw his own dime into Hightower's hands, one of three touchdown passes. He went 12 of 18 for 175 yards. And Jalen Henderson looked great, going 6 of 10 for 82 yards and his first career TD. Hank or no Hank at BYU, the team is in good hands. Game ball to the crowd last night. The biggest in Albertson Stadium history, 36,902, and that boosted Boise State into the lead in the Mountain West attendance race this season at just over 34,000 per game. Fresno State and San Diego State trail, and Air Force is fourth. The Broncos average last year was just over 33,000, and that was with home games against BYU, the Aztecs, and the Bulldogs. Two home games left in November, Wyoming and New Mexico. And on we go to Western Siding Trivia and throw away your paintbrush. Capacity at Albertson Stadium is just under 37,000. It was 14,500 when the place was built in 1970. In what year were the southwest and southeast corners added on to what was then Bronco Stadium? That brought seating capacity to 30,000, which used to be a Division I-A requirement. We'll give you the answer upon start return from the first break and back to Jay and Will. Thanks a lot, Will. We appreciate it.